Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for a presentation titled Characterization and Selection of Antibodies for Precision Diagnostics Using Biocore Surface Plasma Resonance Technology. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Anya Drescher, Senior Application Specialist for Biocore Systems, Cytiva. For a complete biography on our speaker, please visit the tab at the top of your screen. Now, if any questions arise during the presentation, we encourage you to submit them into the Q&A box. Our speaker will address your questions following the end of the presentation. Please join me in welcoming Anya Drescher. I will now turn the presentation over to her. Welcome, Anya. Thanks for joining and welcome to my talk about the characterization and selection of antibodies or other proteins for precision diagnostics using BioCore SPR technology. For all precision diagnostic assays, you see here just some examples, defined detector molecules are needed. Nature provides us with numerous examples of such detectors, like cell surface receptors, that binds hormones or growth factors, all the well-known antibodies you see here, each of them recognizing individual antigens, which can range from tumor markers to virus spike proteins. The proper selection of such binding molecules allows you to develop sensitive and selective diagnostic assays, even for use with very complex biological samples. For a successful diagnostic assay, the detector molecule must fulfill certain biophysical characteristics, which are very individual for biological molecules and can't be theoretically predicted. They need to be measured. The detailed analysis of binding properties and behavior of the detector molecule can guide your selection and support the quality control over the complete lifespan of a diagnostic assay. What are these characteristics of a perfect detector molecule? First of all, the detector needs to be specific for an individual binding site on the respective analyte to not cross-react with other molecules in your sample. A very stable complex should be formed because the signal will last longer and such complexes will be resistant to washing steps in the assay. A fast binding is advantageous since it allows short incubation times for the assay. And finally, the binding of a perfect detector should be insensitive to various reaction conditions. Which questions need to be answered during the detector selection process? First of all, define what should be detected. Are there maybe special details for the analyte known you need to take care of. What kind of sample will the assay face? Is there a potential sample matrix interference on the binding reaction? What is the necessary sensitivity and specificity? Which diagnostic assay format is planned? Since you might need antibodies which recognize different epitopes on the antigen in question. Which temperature range the assay will face during storage or when the analysis is performed? And how stable is the, the detector molecule activity during production, purification and storage? If you can measure the lot to lot variability of the detector activity, you can adjust the concentration applied in your assay production accordingly. All of these questions on the characteristics of a perfect detector molecule can be answered with BioCore SPR systems. Biological interactions are real-time binding events where molecules associate with or dissociate from each other. BioCore systems enable real-time label-free monitoring of these biological interactions. What are the benefits of BioCore SPR systems? They employ a label-free detection system, 
so no labels are required and therefore they can measure binding properties of unmodified substances, resulting in save of time and workload on sample preparation. Vehicle systems measure in real time, so you can observe binding as it happens. And this provides unique information on binding rates. As association and dissociation rates are time dependent processes, they can be only determined with a real time analysis. In addition, real time analysis allows observation of transiently existing complexes as well as stable ones. Vehicle systems have a contact-free detection system, which means the detecting light beam does not pass through the sample. So direct measurements of opaque or colored samples with loss of without loss of sensitivity and accuracy are possible. And you can work with crude samples like serum or cell extracts. Vehicle systems have three core components for detection of molecule interactions in real time. So first, the sensor chip, which is a variable part depending on the application that should be investigated. And this sensor chip is inserted to the BioCore instrument. They have a microfluidic system for automated handling of low sample volumes and a surface plasmon resonance detection unit. The so-called sensogram depicts the binding response observed over time. One interaction partner, which we call the ligand, is attached to the sensor surface chip inserted to the BIOCO instrument. Buffer is flowing over that surface, giving us a baseline response. The sample containing the other interaction partner, the so-called analyte, is passing over that surface, and if binding occurs, the mass on the surface increases, which will be recognized by an increase in response of the SPR detection signal. Here, this system switches back to buffer passing over the surface, and you can then observe how fast the complexes which have been formed, how they decay from the surface. There are several readouts possible from BioCore assays. Specificity, how specific is the interaction for one or the other analyte, which you will recognize if there's a binding response or not. Concentration, how much of a given molecule is active, because only the functional molecules show the respective binding. And binding kinetics can be determined. How fast or slow does the complex form or decay? Such a kinetic characterization of biological interactions can guide the selection of best in class detector molecule. How does this work? We see here an overlay of two interactions showing the same steady state affinity, but significantly different kinetic rate constants which you can recognize from the sensogram shape. So here you see a fast association for this interaction and also a fast dissociation. So the, these complexes decay quite fast. Direction here shows the flow, slower association, but the complexes, when they are formed, they show a very stable uh, complex which decays very slow. You see it here in the slope of the sensogram. In your selection process for the best in class detector molecules, you should aim for a fast association rate because then in your assay, you can allow short incubation times. And with a fast association rate, you would also have the advantage that binding occurs already at lower sample concentrations. But even more important is the 
that you aim for a, a slow dissociation rate because this means the complexes which are formed are very stable. The slower the dissociation rate, the more stable are the complexes. And such stable complexes will withstand several washing steps and incubation times in the run of your assay. I will now present some case studies which demonstrate how BIRCOR SPR analysis was applied for detector molecule selection. First of all, a screening and characterization of antibodies for use with diagnostic devices, which is a collaboration with Biomedical Diagnostics Institute at Dublin City University in Ireland. BDI develops next generation biomedical point of care diagnostic devices. High quality antibodies or antibody fragments are key components used in their diagnostic assays. They have screened a diverse antibody libraries directed against kinetically relevant biomarkers of cardiovascular disease or cancer with aim of their biocore instruments. Here you see an overview of BDI screening workflow. They employ phage display to screen their single chain antibody fragment libraries. BDI has an automated primary screening process, but the results of this initial screen are of limited data quality. So a further detailed analysis was essential to identify good lead candidates for single chain antibody fragments, which will be taken further in the development step. For that purpose, they screened their single chain antibody fragments with a BioCo assay. To speed up the analysis, all single chain fragments were fused to an hemagglutinin antigen tag. An anti hemagglutinin antibody was immobilized on their surface and so the single chain fragments with the HA tag shown here in red, so single chain fragments are in blue here, this is the tag, they could be captured directly from crude cell lysates on the surface on the anti-HA antibody. So different single chain fragments could be uh, analyzed in each assay cycle. So in, in the used system, eight different single chain fragments were screened per assay cycle. And always one concentration of the troponin was passed over the samples. And then kinetics were investigated. And in this screen, 1096 well plates of single chain fragments specific to human cardiac troponin one were screened. Here you see the raw data, the results they got from the screen of all these single chain fragments. This is an overlay of all sens sensograms from each of the clones investigated in one picture, and they were focusing um, for, for the ranking of these clones based on the complex stability. So they mainly looked here in the on the dissociation phase and they took report points early in the dissociation and after one minute, which you see here. And the, the difference of these two responses were used to calculate the percent left amount. And this number um, indi allows a fast um, selection of the most stable complexes. As you see here in this sensogram, there are some which show a very stable binding. So there's almost no signal difference between these two report points here. And there are others like this one, which decay very fast. So there will be a huge difference in these report points taken. So this is a very fast and easy identification possible for clones which show the most stable binding. The result overview is easily, can easily be seen in such a plot where the, the early response put here on the y-axis and the later response after one minute of dissociation 
is plotted in this direction. So this line here shows 100% left. So it means there was no signal drop with, uh, uh, over the run of this one minute. And the clones, which um, are located here, close to the 100% left line are the most interesting ones because they are the best binders showing the most stable complexes. In this assay, they have run 960 samples within eight hours and the data, all the results could be evaluated in less than two hours. The most stable single chain fragments were then rapidly identified and used for further prioritization. So top 10% were taken for an additional kinetic characterization. Because what they aim for is to get the best in class binders, which show also a very stable complex formation at physiological temperatures. So for this purpose, they investigated kinetic rate constants at 25 degree, which would be similar to what they have done in the screening. And they measured the same interaction at 37 degree, shown here. And this is one of the best in class single chain fragments, which retained a quite stable uh, complex formation. So a slow dissociation also at physiological 37 degrees Celsius. So a temperature stable high affinity single chain could be quickly identified for further testing in BDI's diagnostic device platform. The next study looks at the impact on the biochemical environment on detector molecule binding. This is a collaboration with Scott Clarkamp and Andy Drake from Upgenix and David Mischke. The authors of this study asked the question, does the binding of detector antibodies tolerate varying buffer conditions? And to answer this, they investigated the binding behavior and the variable salt and pH conditions. And they employed such, as, such an assay setup. So four different antibodies were immobilized here in one flow cell and the same set of antibodies also here in these others. So they had four, four flow cells with four different antibodies and over each flow cell, the antigen diluted in a buffer with different conditions was um, passing over that surface. So they could investigate four different buffer conditions at a time. You see here the results of the antibody binding under various salt conditions in the buffer. So here the kinetics of all these four antibodies was investigated with buffers containing 50 millimolar sodium chloride up to 600 millimolar sodium chloride. And the affinity change was observed. Three of these antibodies showed sequentially lowered affinity. Just the monoclonal antibody 12 was almost unaffected by changes in salt concentration. And here are the combined results for salt and pH effects on the binding of the four investigated antibodies. This plot shows here the determined rate constants, association rate and dissociation rate for each of the measurements under the eight, under the eight different uh, running conditions. And just mono, the monoclonal antibody 12 shown here with the pink circle showed the least buffer sensitive binding. And this antibody was then taken for further investig for further testing in a diagnostic device. Now I will show you how epitope binning analysis can be used for further differentiation of diagnostic reagents. For the development of a diagnostic sandwich assay, like the one shown here, you need to identify antibody pairs 
which recognize non-overlapping epitopes on the antigen to be determined. Otherwise, they cannot bind to the antigen at the same time. But this is a prerequisite for setting up such type of assays. The binding characteristics to be screened for have to be the same as for all perfect detectors. Epitope binning experiments with BioCore need minimal time to results, especially when using predefined capture formats. For this purpose, BioCore offers ready to use capture kits for antibodies from different species, like mouse or human. We provide pre established assay methods for large number of pairwise antibody testing. That guarantees a fast learning curve also for new users. The sensor chip surfaces thereby can be used multiple times, which lowers the running cost for such an assay. And the antibodies investigated can be applied directly from hybridoma supernatants. So there is no risk of damage during purification and a shorter time to decision, which allows less budget spent on keeping unnecessary clones in culture. The setup looks like this. The capture antibody from our capture kits is immobilized on the surface, or you can even use pre-immobilized ones. The first antibody from your pair is captured here on the surface. The other binding site is blocked, and then the antigen is injected, binding here to the first antibody. The second antibody can only bind when it shows, when it, when it shows a binding when it reacts with another epitope on this antigen. Then the whole complex is removed and you have a free surface again to inject the next antibody pair which should be investigated. And you can observe all these interactions in the uh, corresponding sensogram. So first you have the baseline here, then you have the injection of the first antibody, blocking antigen, and second antibody. And for each of these interactions, you can also observe if they are less or very stable. In addition to the predefined methods, we offer an intuitive software for streamlined evaluation support of epitope binning data. This software runs on our most actual high throughput instrument platforms like BioCore 8K Plus, BioCore 8K, and also the data from BioCore T200 can be investigated in this software. Here you see the most important evaluation items for an epitope binning experiment. So this here is the sensorgram overlay of all interactions, binding of the second antibody. And here you can set uh, cutoff lines very easily just by moving them. So it's a very interactive tool. And from, from these results here, the so-called heat map will be generated, indicating um, the antibodies which recognize the same epitope, here indicated in red, and the ones which uh, will recognize different epitopes. And from these results, the binning wheel is created, which indicates the relation and connection of all identified bins on the investigated antigen. Now I will show you how BioCore can be used for quantification of binding activity. And the first example, you will see how a direct determination of active protein concentration in complex samples like plasma could look like. The default assay format for diagnostics using BioCore systems is in most cases a direct binding assay. So here, you see the detector antibody immobilized on the sensor chip surface. The sample containing the analyte is passing over that surface and binding to the detector can then be measured. Here you see the principle of a biocore concentration analysis in real time. This is the assay design. So on the sensor chip, uh, the detector antibody is immobilized on a three-dimensional dextrin matrix. This is chosen because 
Also, if immobilized, the antibody molecule remains flexible on this dextrin, and we have a three-dimensional surface, so the capacity here for detector antibodies is much higher. This will lead to a, um, a much more sensitive um, detection range. The sample is passing over that surface, and only the antigens, which are recognized here by these antibodies, gives an response because only they bind to the surface. You see here the corresponding sensograms from a constant from a calibration curve. So here there's this is an overlay of the, the different concentrations injected here. With increasing concentration, the signal increases, and here these complexes which are formed are very stable. To get rid of them, because we want always to reuse the surface, um, the samples are regenerated with a pH, high pH or high salt shift, and uh, the complexes are opened and the sensograms are then um, back to baseline. So we have an empty surface again. So what you see here are increasing concentrations and then for each concentration, the report point, the response is taken at a defined time point. And this response is then plotted against the given concentration of the standard, and you get here these standard curves. An unknown sample is the responses measured from the sensogram at the same time like for the standard, and this response then tells us with the calibration curve how much concentration is in that sample. As an exemplary quantification, I chose this BioCore IgG subclass distribution assay, which was designed for a human IgG production process. When IgG used for intravenous administration, the IgG subclass distribution needs to be determined. In this essay, on the four flow cells of a BioCore T200 system, antibodies recognizing the different subtypes like IgG1, IgG2, IgG3 were immobilized, and the diluted plasma sample was passing over all flow cells in a row. So giving four different concentration results in one from one sample injection. This table depicts the standard which was used, and uh, this showed uh, the same distribution as it would be uh, expected in human IgG, um, uh, yeah, in typical human IgG. Here you see the standard curves for each IgG subclass obtained simultaneously with the different detectors immobilized here on the different flow cells. These are overlays of the sensograms for the different calibration concentration. And the report points here have, uh, are taken to create um, the calibration curves depicted here, um, con concentration against relative response. And you see some of the, uh, this interaction here is very, very stable over the whole run of the experiment. So you see all calibrations curve are more or less exactly overlaying. For other detectors, uh, their stability is not that well as this one. So you see a drop in activity with lowering signals in the calibration curves over the run of the analysis. But this is no problem for BioCore data evaluation software as it can compensate for these effects. For very stable assays, like the total IgG concentration determined here, the detectors show a high level of assay stability and robustness. So as you see here, this is total IgG determination, and these are the standard curves uh, over the run of the assay and also measured at different days, so day one, day five, and day nine. And you see they're almost overlapping. They're all run on the same surface and still no activity loss can be observed. So such an excellent assay stability enabled the use of a master standard curve 
and results for the production could be observed at line in less than 10 minutes per sample. Here you see how thousand cycle runs are looking in one plot combined together. The red dots here are the calibration curves over the run of these experiments. The green are the controls and the blue are the samples which have been measured. And you see the samples and when it's a repeated sample, it was had a CV of 1.3% over the thousand cycle runs. So when when you are lucky and you have a very stable detector and a properly established assay, you can use it for very long time. It's very cost efficient and finally. I show you this Birko assay for quantitation of influenza virus. Here an inhibition format was used. For such an assay, uh, the respective influenza hemagglutinin protein was immobilized on the sensor surface. In the sample, a defined concentration of the detector molecule, which is here an anti-HA antibody, is pre-incubated with the sample. If there's a low number of virus particles, a high concentration of detector molecules is still present in the sample and they are able to bind to the surface, giving a high response. When a high number, a high virus theta is present in your sample, most of the detector molecules are bound to the virus particles and just a few can bind to the sensor surface, giving, resulting just in a very low response. And this is how such typical sensograms look like. So you he see here the sensogram in red, there's just a very low amount of virus standard. So the, there's a lot of detector molecule binding to the surface. And when you increase the virus theta, you get most of the detector molecules bind to the virus and just a low response signal is observed, a typical inhibition assay. Here you see a combined assay to quantify three flu virus strains at a time represented in a vaccine dose. So the setup was as follows. You have one empty flow cell for control. And then on, the three, on these three flow cells, the different um, virus strain antigens were immobilized. The virus sample, uh, the vaccine sample, was then passed over all flow cells in a row and you got um, these inhibition curves for the standards in parallel. The interesting of this essay was that the, the vaccine producing company initially just measured concentration of the different strains in their vaccine with an SRID assay shown here with the red bars. This line here indicates the essential concentration which should be included in the vaccine dose. And indicated in blue here, these are the results of the Biocor measurement. And you can see that for the strain B, uh, the vaccine dose was significantly overfilled. And uh, by knowing this, then later on, this company could save a lot of this recombinant material and um, more doses could be uh, uh, produced with the same amount uh, of vaccine. With the first part of my talk, I hopefully convinced you that BioCore SPR analysis is a valuable tool on the selection of detectors for diagnostic assays. A fast and reliable selection of detector molecules which show exactly the kinetic behavior which is advantages for your diagnostics is possible with Biocor assays. You can determine the specificity and epitope recognition on the antigen to be diagnosed. It is also possible to predict robustness of the detector binding over a range of environmental conditions and in complex samples. Observing the active concentration of your detector molecule with the Biocor assay during production, purification, and storage allows you to define protein concentration needed for diagnostic assay production, 
resulting in lower lot-to-lot -lot variability. So you can optimize process and storage conditions for your respective detector antibody. Generally, just one interaction assay needs to be established for all analytics on an individual detector molecule. In the second part of my talk, you have seen examples where BioCore SPR analysis was employed as a direct diagnostic tool to save assay time and sample material. A direct and specific analysis with low amounts of complex samples is possible because BioCore microfluidics allow working with low sample volumes to save rare liquids like patient or animal serum. Several interactions can be observed simultaneously with the identical sample, saving sample material and assay preparation time. Taking into account the higher reproducibility, less hands-on time, less hands-on and assay time of a biocore analysis, it is significantly advantageous over the broadly employed ELISA format assays. So I hope you agree with me that BioCore instruments provide a versatile, multifunctional analytical tool to assist your selection of the perfect detector molecule or to make use of BioCore instruments to run directly automated diagnostic assays. With this, I will end my presentation and thank the audience for your kind attention. Thank you, Anya, for that excellent presentation. We will now move into the live Q&A portion of our presentation. As a reminder to our audience, please submit your questions via the Q&A box. Okay, Anya, our first question is, let's see, we have some great questions coming in. Let's start with this one. To determine antibody concentration, I use OD280, and HPLC via protein A affinity column. What is the advantage of using the BioCore system? Yeah, so uh, thanks, this is a good question um, because uh, what's typically done is to determine uh, concentration of IgGs via protein A columns because it tells us how much um, active and functional um, antibodies are in the solution, but this is just determine uh, binding uh, via the FC part. The huge advantage which you could have in addition to such a measurement, which you could also do in a biocore assay, um, you can immobilize the respective antigen of the antibody. So such a binding will show you how um, what, what's the real activity, what you would need for your further as a development and to observe the stability uh, of your antibodies, as this is something which is the individual function of, of the respective antibody you will investigate. And uh, in our systems, as you have seen in the presentation before, you will be able to measure, for example, the binding of the FC part, look how much properly folded antibodies are in your sample solution and on another flow cell determine the antigen binding activity, which is often um, much more sensitive also than the FC part, which is the most stable part of an antibody. So this, um, uh, the, the antigen binding is what you're really interested um, when you will look at um, storage conditions or um, stability uh, during purification or whatever else could be interesting. Also then how it works in your uh, future essay. Thank you. Now Anya, in the example from Biomedical Diagnostics Institute, you show eight different SCFE fragments screened per assay cycle. How many parameters or reagent candidates can be tested in parallel? Oh, this is also a good question. So in our typical um, BioCore 8 play instruments, you can always um, run eight different uh, single chain fragments tested in parallel. So you can capture them, eight different, and then run your sample over them. And I have once uh, did uh, um, uh, a calculation for an HDA screening 
for uh, a customer of mine. And um, so uh, here we, we calculated that, for example, um, when to screen two uh, 348 plates with with clone extracts, um, what, did, what they get from their phage display, um, when you just capture it for one minute and then do a screen, as I had showed a similar one with one antigen concentration, such a measurement can be done um, without any hands-on uh, and it will run 20 hours. If you do the same screening, um, um, with, with capture and then directly look for kinetics of these uh, fragments, then with three concentration and a single cycle screen, you could uh, get these results in 27 hours. And uh, then it's very easy uh, to evaluate them. So it's really a possibility already for your initial screen directly from the extract to run it in BioCore systems. Excellent. Now, our next question, it's a few parts, so bear with me here. I develop lateral flow assays kits. The membranes often contain or require anionic surfactants to help make the membrane hydrophilic and help proteins bind to the membrane. However, surfactants denature proteins and can destroy the antigen binding sites of some monoclonals, making them non-usable in a lateral flow assay. Being able to identify candidates that exhibit this behavior early is therefore an advantage. Can Biocore be used to screen detergents, surfactants, and to monitor impact on antibody and antigen binding? Oh, thanks for this question. Yeah, this is really uh, interesting and uh, we have the possibility. So similar to what, what I showed in the presentation where they uh, measured binding under different pH and soil concentration just by changing the running buffer. We also have an opportunity uh, in our BioCore 8K systems and also in BioCore S200 to test um, a lot of different conditions um, for, for the binding itself. So um, we have a functionality which is called ABA um, mm -hmm. where you um, can inject the sample under uh, significantly different conditions. So the sample injection which comes to your binding will be, can be uh, designed under different soil, different detergent as you would be interesting. Mm -hmm. And so by this you can um, in a predefined method, you can test up to ni 96 different conditions in one run and look how it will influence the specific binding. So this is a very easy way if, if, if you want to get information on this, um, test the binding as the functionality of your antibody with the antigen, which should be tested in your uh, lateral flow assay. And uh, then just vary the condition, whatever additives you need to test, um, you can add them and then uh, observe how they influence, if they influence at all, uh, this specific antibody you aim for. Or then you could um, look for set the conditions you want to have, for example, in your running buffer already, and then do the screening of your antibodies under such conditions. So then you can directly identify which might be the ones which uh, will work later on in your test kit. Great, thank you, Anya. Now we're time for maybe two more questions, but I do wanna remind our audience that any questions we are unable to answer during our live event today, they will be answered via email following the live presentation. Okay, let's, uh, let's go with this one. Which sample volumes do you need for an analysis? Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is a good question and maybe also in comparison uh, to other essays, very interesting. So um, as an example uh, for where, where I showed the analysis in the BioCore T200, for such a concentration measurement, you will need uh, 40 to 80 microliter of your sample um, for, for one to five minutes injection. And... Um, it doesn't matter if you just investigate this one analysis or if you directly investigate uh, four different interactions as the, if the sample passes over all surfaces will be the identical solution 
and giving you one or up to four different interaction results. Great. And Anya, let's wrap with this question. Isn't there a risk of clogging of this microfluidic system when working with crude sample extracts or plasma? This is an understandable um, uh, yeah, problem um, you, you mm -hmm. might think of, but uh, we really have a lot of experience with handling samples, uh, uh, these complex samples like plasma, and all our instruments have predefined maintenance procedures already programmed in the instrument control software, which rec reminds you th uh, that, that they need to have a cleaning. And uh, so this is all predefined protocols. And in addition for handling samples, for example, we have also a lot of lab guys and protocols. So we have um, experienced um, with what are the right washing solutions to be um, when, when you're working with sticky samples like, like plasma. And uh, you can get all these protocols. So just contact us. We will, we will really happy to support you uh, in this handling. And uh, this is nothing you need to fear of. Um, there have been really a lot of these studies done. There's also already published results on this. And uh, uh, we can guarantee that um, you will make it and, and don't need to worry. Thank you, Anya. Now, it does look like we are out of time, but I want to tell our audience to not worry. Any of those questions that were submitted that we were not able to answer today, Anya will be addressing them via email. Anya, thank you again for your time today, and thank you to the audience for your great questions. Today's presentation will be available for on-demand viewing for 12 months, so please remember to share this with your colleagues who may be interested in today's topic. And don't miss out on the other presentations on our agenda. Visit the Agenda tab in the auditorium for a full listing. Thank you again for your participation. And until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.